How you doing guys? My name is Aaron Blackie, and in this video, we're going to look at an underutilized grappling skill that is super effective when damage is allowed to be performed within the rule set. I'm a black belt in BJJ and Judo, and I'm a current professional mixed martial artist fighting out of Australia. Judo black belt, Jiu Jitsu black belt. Oh! If you haven't already, please support this channel by hitting that subscribe button and we'll get started. Grappling sports have evolved to predominantly deal with control and not with damage. MMA is the first instance where we are able to observe professional athletes compete in a combat sport that allows both control as well as damage. This means that certain positions are not valued as they cannot be exploited in control only or in damage only sports. Classic examples are the level change, the technical get up, and the most undervalued, underutilized, and unorthodox means of control. These are isolations. All three of these examples create responses that are not able to be effectively taken advantage of outside the context of MMA or real combative situations. Take for instance the level change, a movement that faints a double leg or single leg wrestling takedown. It does not draw a response in Muay Thai because there is no risk of actually being taken down. However, in MMA, not reacting to someone's level change will leave a wide hole for a lower level shot, but defending this shot will result in you dropping your hands and leaving your head exposed to strikes. Right now, we're gonna show you a couple limb isolation techniques that can be used from different positions. The monkey guard isolation should be used as a last ditch effort. So I don't wanna let my opponent create his lasso, his mechanical lock around my legs here against the wall. Okay, I can't sprawl my hips out, very hard to stop the takedown. So ideally, you use your, your staggered stance where you're orientated uh, parallel with the wall, base wide to prevent your legs from, from being captured in that lasso. It was an early evolution uh, made against guys like Randy Couture who would simply back them up to the wall, then level change, connect the hands with the opponent unable to sprawl, drag the hips off and then perform some damaging ground and pound. However, it does happen. So our lasso um, from our opponent has been made, it's very hard to defend. We need an option, we're going to go to the double overhook. So we're lassoing over our opponent's torso now. It's important that you orientate your weight towards the head side, not, not this side here, won't work. Okay, so we lean onto the head and then we work with the motion to create a sweep. So as we continue through, We'll see, we sweep, bang, in this position here. Now, it is a bit of a scramble. What we need to do is get both of our overhooks, that's this hand here and this hand here, uh, between our opponent's arms and head, and then we want to connect our hands. So we'll see that play out, feed through. You don't scramble on top yet, we connect the hands. Now, once the hands are connected, we can then switch our hips and come up on top, isolating with a stockade style position. So we'll see. Come up, you isolate inside there, both arms in that stockade position before returning to our knees and performing damaging strikes against an undefended opponent. Okay, the crisscross position is probably the most effective uh, methods of isolation for performing ground and pound um, in the game. It enables you to really maintain control for a prolonged period of time and perform some devastating damage with your strikes. So to do that, we first need to establish a three-quarter mount position. Now, three-quarter mount's one of those positions where jujitsu doesn't score. So you're always gonna seek to free that ankle um, and get your four points. However, in MMA, we're not concerned with points. We're concerned about dominating our opponents through mechanics, angles, and gravity. So having my opponent on his side here prevents him from engaging his quads, glutes, and hamstrings, his powerful muscles in that ankle, knee, and hip triple extension. So he can't bridge powerfully here. Instead, he's forced to use his little abductor muscles on the side. Now, that's really good for me because I wanna keep him here in a position of forced disparity where I can perform damaging strikes and he can't perform them back towards me. In jiu-jitsu, all he really needs to do is elbow to knee here and he can clear that knee back inside and start working his half guard escapes. However, in MMA, by him opting to attack this knee to try and press it back through here, He's going to really grant me the opportunity to perform some big strikes to a largely undefended head. So the wager, the risk versus reward um, of using this three quarter mount is much, much, much higher, um, favorable for the man on top in damage rule sets, okay, when you're allowed to exploit it with strikes. 
So I'll usually opt to stay here. I, I won't even try and pass. I'll keep here and then look to isolate, which we're going to do with the hammerlock on the far side. So as we continue to advance, here we go. So again, standard hammerlock, reaching through, grabbing the wrist, and then we're gonna drive it in underneath our opponent. We can assist ourselves by using this hand, so we create a two on one position and really force it in, aiming to drive our weight over this opponent's shoulder. Remember in terms of frames, we want our opponent on a hip and shoulder. So by focusing our attention on creating pressure or weight displacement towards those positions, it's gonna make it much harder for our opponent to escape. So as we continue, drive that in the two on one, and now I'm actually standing up, enabling me a little bit more um, ankle, knee, and hip extension on those strikes. I can get my head vertical to my hips for a moment, and then come down on those strikes. A very powerful position, very strong and effective for ground and pound, and very difficult for the opponent to escape from. So I'm gonna go over a few different methods of exploiting this crisscross position in terms of doing damage. So the first one, we've got the hammerlock isolation and we've got the three quarter mount, our opponent's stuck on the hip and shoulder. We, however, are up on our knees, hips, uh, one ankle, so we can produce a lot of force, okay? So we can just simply punch through our opponent's arm and we're, we're gonna win that exchange. We're gonna be able to do a lot of damage. He's not gonna be able to stop us very well. We can also seek to isolate that arm. So one way of doing that is using our chin. So our chin sits on top of it, locks on, and then we perform strikes. Now, again, we won't maintain this chin control forever. Maybe we'll get one, two strikes off, and then this arm is going to slip out. We continue punching through, maybe isolate it again, um, or just ignore it. Up to you. You won't hold it forever, but that's the case with a lot of these isolations. They, they give you the opportunity to really get some good undefended strikes in. Now, as we continue to advance the next one, we're gonna actually make space and pass it through. Now, this one really does open your opponent up because it's actually very unlikely that they will get that back through. Now, you've got a free limb and both of your opponent's arms are completely isolated. From here, again, we're gonna perform damaging strikes to the undefended head. Very, very nasty position. The poor man's triangle is performed by capturing a triangle but not clearing one of the arms. So we've created a lasso here with our legs and we've got one arm, one head, which we need for a traditional triangle, but we also have like a hand in there. Now, from a jiu-jitsu point of view, that's gonna stop my opponent from being strangled on this side of his carotid artery there. Okay, we're not gonna be able to cut off the blood flow on that side until we force him to remove this arm. Kind of a stalling point in no damage sports. However, when damage is a factor, this acts as an excellent isolation. The head is horizontal to the hips, so we've off-balanced our opponent, putting him in a very weak structure, and we're then able to perform strikes to the back of the head, or the top of the head, um, if it's a professional fight. Now remember, elbows are cutting weapons, so we want to aim for the forehead or the orbital bones. Uh, we're not using them as concussive strikes from this position. It is also worth noting that this will present a horns of the dilemma for the opponent. He either needs to extract his hand to put a frame in front of his head to stop it getting cut, in which case you'll be able to go back to fixing up your triangle choke, making the adjustments and getting the submission. Or he leaves it in to stop the strangulation and consequently get split open by those damaging strikes. I hope you've enjoyed this little training series and have picked up some new ideas that you can add into your game. The evolution of mixed martial arts tactics and strategies is happening so quickly, but do not forget the basics. Limb isolations are no good to you if you do not know how to maintain balance and stability through a range of different structures. If you don't know how to elicit predictable responses, and if you don't know how to exploit the weaknesses to these responses. These techniques are best viewed as tools that can assist your larger strategic and tactical fighting style. Also note, when practicing limb isolations, many positions can be viewed almost as fight winning in themselves. For example, if you're able to maintain control of your opponent in a crucifix for a minute long duration, I would advise releasing the position and attempting to re-establish it or attain another training goal. Using these positions for purposes other than pins to employ damage or submissions from will actually result in them becoming less effective tools for you compared to sharpening them for what they're best for. Take the crucifix for example again. Developing the skill of maintaining control 
where devastating elbow strikes can be performed from will make you more effective in combat than if you were to neglect developing control skills in this position and instead spending time attempting far side armbars. These subtle shifts in attention and objectives are what has allowed fighters like Khabib to make amazing innovations in the use of grappling control skills to put him in position to perform effective damage from. Always remember the Shiva Theseus paradox, the whole is greater than the sum of the pieces. If you'd like to learn more, head over to Fight IQ, where we have an entire course with over 25 different limb isolation techniques from a huge range of different positions and gripping mechanisms.